Welcome back to another episode of 5-Minute History. I'm your host, Rebecca Larson. Today, we're going to look at the departure of Princess Mary Tudor from England in 1514, when she went off to become the Queen of France. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer. So no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's all totally free with no catch. I highly recommend you give it a try. Download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. Es ist unglaublich schwer, sauer auf Tom zu sein. Wenn der anfängt zu lachen, kann ich einfach nicht ernst bleiben. Das verrückte Lachen hat er von Mama. Und die gesunden Zähne hat er von der AOK Rheinland-Pfalz-Saarland. Wechselt jetzt in die familienstarke Kasse und sichert euch noch mehr gesunde Extras über 1700 Euro jährlich. Zum Beispiel 100 Euro mit dem AOK Zahnkonto. AOK Gesundheit erleben. Jetzt mehr erfahren auf gerngesund.de. The Tudor's Dynasty Podcast. As the youngest surviving daughter of King Henry VII, Mary Tudor, younger sister of Henry VIII, was born to make alliances and to breed heirs. In 1507, at the age of 11, Mary was betrothed to the son of Philip I and Juana of Castile. Juana was the sister of Catherine of Aragon. This betrothal was eventually broken in 1514. And Mary was then promised to the King of France, Louis XII. Louis's wife, Anne of Brittany, died on the 9th of January, 1514. And much like Henry VIII, about a decade later, King Louis was desperate for a healthy male heir. At the time of their marriage, Louis was in his 50s, old for early 16th century, and Mary was 18. A letter written by a Venetian merchant in England to his brothers discussed the grand departure of Princess Mary from England in 1514. Quote, Entertainment, banquets, and jousts are being held for the departure of the Queen, who left for Dover four days ago, accompanied by four of the chief lords of England, namely the Treasurer, the Lord Chamberlain, the Chancellor, and Lord Stanley besides 400 knights and barons and 200 gentlemen and other squires with their horses. End quote. Now, who were these four chief lords mentioned? From my research, it would appear that the treasurer was Sir Richard Weston, father of the ill-fated Francis Weston, who was executed in 1536 due to the Anne Boleyn downfall. The Lord Chamberlain was Charles Somerset, who was actually legitimized son of Henry Beaufort, 3rd Duke of Somerset. Charles was made Earl of Worcester in 1514. Quote, The lords, knights, and barons were all accompanied by their wives, attended by their damsels. There would be about 1,000 palfreys and 100 women's carriages. There are so many gowns of woven gold, and with gold grounds, housing for the palfreys and horses of the same materials, and chains and jewels, that they are worth a vast amount of treasure. And some of the noblemen in this company, to do themselves honor, had spent as much as 200,000 crowns each. Many of the merchants proposed going to Dover to see the fine sight, and about a week ago, all the merchants of every nation went to the court. The Queen of France desired to see them all, and gave her hand to each of them. She wore a gown in the French fashion, a wove gold, very costly. She is very beautiful and has not her match in all England. Is a young woman of 16 years old, actually 18, tall, fair, and of light complexion, with a color and most affable and graceful. On her neck was a jeweled diamond, as large and as broad as a full-sized finger, with a pear-shaped pearl beneath it, the size of a pigeon's egg, which jewel had been sent her as a present by the king of France. And the jewelers of the row, whom the king desired to value it, estimated its worth at 60,000 crowns. 
It was marvelous that the existence of this diamond and pearl should never been known. It was believed that they had belonged to the late King of France, or the Duke of Brittany, the father of the late Queen. According to the report of the courtiers, the Queen was to cross over to Boulogne, and the King of France would come as far as Abbeville. It was said to meet her and there consummate their marriage with this, quote, nymph from heaven, her beauty and affability warranting the expression. On bidding farewell to the merchants, she made them all many offers, speaking a few words in French and delighting everybody. The whole court now speaks both French and English, as in the time of the late king. End quote. Now, Mary was in the care of Thomas Howard, Duke of Norfolk, on her trip, and on the 2nd of October, they launched for France. Her voyage was not without problems. A very strong wind picked up merely an hour after they launched. This scattered all the ships in their fleet in several directions. One of the ships, called the Great Elizabeth, succumbed to the weather and sunk with the loss of 400 men. Mary's own ship ran ashore near the entrance to Boulogne Harbor. Sir Christopher Garney's, an ambassador to King Louis XII, ran through the breakers and carried the soaked and frightened Mary to safety. Mary's marriage to King Louis did not last long, and after his death, less than a year after being married, Mary secretly wed Charles Brandon, Duke of Suffolk. And the rest... Is history. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Tudor's Dynasty Podcast. You can follow and support the Tudor's Dynasty Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon at Tudor's Dynasty.